Lil Snoop was an upcoming rapper who displayed an enormous aptitude for spitting bars and freestyles. He made a lasting impression on the industry and seemed to be the next in line to blow. He didn't get to spend a lot of time in the industry, but the little time that he did spend as an entertainer allowed the world to see the rising star that he truly was. He caught the attention of Meek Mill and turned this new connection into an opportunity for himself and was using it to work himself out of the small town that he was from. Unfortunately, Lil Snoop's life was cut short and the word on the streets was that it was somebody in his own circle that took him out. Today, we're going to be talking about the story of Lil Snoop. So without further ado, let's go. Hey, real quick, before we jump into the video, guys, I made a second channel, KB Goes Live V2. I've been dropping music and things like that over there, and I'll probably eventually get to dropping smaller videos and things like that on that channel. If you get a moment, go ahead, jump over there, hit the subscribe button on the second channel so y'all can rock with me over there. And uh, yeah, anyways, that's it. Let's get into the story of Lil Snoop. I grew up kind of fast, wasn't trying to go to school because I was getting cash. You with me, I swear to God, you'll get hurt. See, my we from the slums, we came from the dirt. All my went to school when they bang with me. Some of my homies' mama told them, don't hang with me. In the streets, trying to get the cheese, and trying to duck the police, just trying to stay free. My C4, they gave that 15. Lil Snoop. Real name of Darren Ross was born June 13, 1995 in Winfield, Louisiana, but he grew up about 30 minutes away from that in a small town called Jonesboro. He got his nickname Lil Snoop after the cartoon character Snoopy, specifically because his father's name was Charlie Brown, just like the main character of the show. How did Snoop actually get the names? How did he get that nickname? <laughs> well, um, it was Lil Snoop, he gave that part to himself. Okay. Uh, his nickname Snoop. His godmother gave it to him because his dad nickname is Charlie Brown. Okay, okay. So, you know, I was just thinking, like, Snoopy just was too corny okay. for me. So we wasn't going to do Snoopy, and she was like, just call him Snoop. Okay. You know, so we Snoop just stuck with him. Although he got his name due to his dad, Lil Snoop never got the chance to know him. That's because his pops was sent to prison after being sentenced to 20 years when Snoop was about four years old. I know my daddy sitting in that cell going crazy. Crazy. Thinking about Lil Snoop like his life amazing. And he don't even owe me. That's my daddy, but he don't really even know me. <laughs> see, they say, Snoop, you grew up. You grew up without a father. But I see now, they really just made you grind harder. He had a, he had a freestyle, Meek Mill and, and Lil Snoop was in the studio. Yeah. He did, like I say, he did millions of views. And he said, and he don't even owe me. That's my daddy, but he don't really even know me. Yeah. Like, when you heard that, yeah. like, how did you feel when you heard that line? That's just a line for the people that they run there and have another day that they wake up feeling like, hey, man, my pops ain't here. You see what I'm saying? It's understandable. You see what I'm saying? I understand my situation. You see what I'm saying? Most don't want me to understand it. I understand my situation. I leave a kid here at age five that basically has to raise itself in the streets. You see what I'm saying? So if you wake up at age 17 and be like, man, you, I have to understand that. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But God allowed you to stay in my life. Even though you do say, uh, woo, 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 you gonna come back and you gonna holler at me. You gonna accept me as your dad. Mm -hmm. So by you saying something one time, I really don't pay it no attention because I know this new really loved me. Yeah. With his pops out of the picture, life was even harder for Snoop and his mom in the early years. They was just trying to make it any way that they could. What inspired me is just, I have them. You know what I'm saying? Like, like my mom, we know my daddy gone. My mom, and me, you know what I'm saying? My mom really had me young, so we ain't have nothing. So me not having nothing, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, ah, oh, let Challenges of his upbringing, Snoop's indomitable spirit shone through as he possessed the courage and strength of a lion. He carried an immense amount of weight on his shoulders, but never let it defeat him. Instead, he brightened up the lives of those around him with his humor and lightheartedness, perhaps as a way of coping with the harsh realities of street life, something that he knew all too well. He liked to just be the class clown. Like you could just, you know, it's if there, yeah, if there was a, if there was a conversation going on. He probably the only one standing up, doing all the little, you know, everything, the movement, the gestures. So, yeah, he had a personality of his own. At the same time, he just recognized people, so he could read people real good. We have that little gift where we could just read through people. Before his dad, you gonna get a laugh out of Snoop. You know, that was a good thing about him. He kept the life of everybody going. Uh, for people that may not know who Snoop was personally, how would you describe Lil Snoop? I would just say Snoop was a clown. 
Uh, Snoop liked to joke. Snoop liked to talk about people and just kind of high side a lot, you know. Right. So he was a very jokey type person. Reflecting on Snoop's experience, it's both commendable and heartbreaking that a child had to endure such difficulties. However, it's important to note that Snoop never let his circumstances hold him back. Even at the young age of four, he knew that he had the talent and the drive to become a rap superstar, and he dedicated himself to owning his craft. It's remarkable that he was already rapping at such a young age, and this only further illustrates his determination to succeed in the music industry. I mean, he's been rapping, you know what I'm saying, for a long time, like four years old, rap, rapping, just was in him to rap, so I didn't really take it serious. Like, like that, of course, at that age. So it's just something I think you just like to do, okay. go write it down, but more so. But he stuck with it, and he just knew that's something that he wanted to do. I mean, just li listening to him when he first started, because he would be able to just like make a sentence that just rhymed with the sentence that made sense. One sentence didn't make sense, but it, what he said next rhymed with that. So he just kind of, you know, threw his words around. So I know he had it in him. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Snoop encountered several diversions that caused him to venture out into the streets where he was surrounded by individuals who were grappling with the challenges of life on the impoverished streets of Jonesboro. Despite his mother's attempts to guide him towards the correct course, residing in an unsafe environment posed a continuous danger to his safety. Snoop was confronted with the crucial decision point where he had to choose between following his mother's advice and giving up on his aspirations or taking control of his destiny by altering his way of thinking and behavior. He made a responsible choice to pursue his interests and began implementing modifications that would have a constructive impact on his life. From a young age, Snoop's natural talent for rapping was apparent as he was able to effortlessly put words and sentences together and make them rhyme. As he continued to grow and develop his skills, his flow, bars, and delivery became more refined. Despite this, he faced setbacks when he was kicked out of a rap group that he was in for unknown reasons. However, Snoop's mother was a constant source of support for her son and refused to let his dreams be shattered by the group's rejection. She encouraged him to believe in his own talent and offered to invest in any equipment that he may have needed to pursue his passion for rapping. It was just some things, you know, life obstacles that he went through. And I remember telling him like, Snoop, I don't care how good you can rap until you start changing your ways, God is not gonna bless you. So I think once he started listening and taking heed to that and he started making those moves of just changing his life, then the doors just start opening for him just like without effort. I can say like as a little kid, you know, maybe five to seven, it was more so like go over there and rap and, and write it down over, you know, get you a pad and write it down. But once he started, you know, getting older, um, he was a part of a group that, you know, they kicked him out of the group pretty much. And so I told him, hey, you know, you sound good by yourself. We can just start buying pieces of equipment and make a studio at the house if that's what you really want to do. I was just trying to keep him out of trouble. Um, there were some things I was fearful of him going to prison more than anything. It was just more so of keeping him out of jail and not following the footsteps, you know, of, of his dad. So that was my thing. Snoop's mother had a twofold objective. She not only recognized her son's talent, but also wanted to shield him from the hazards of the street life and prevent him from emulating his incarcerated father's footsteps. She understood that rap was the ideal channel for Snoop's exuberance and inventiveness, and thus encouraged him to pursue his dream. Mama Snoop disclosed in an interview that Snoop would occasionally go missing from school for extended periods, but she trusted that he was dedicating that time to his music and granted him the liberty to follow his passion. Now, you guys, well, he was raised in Louisiana, right? Yes. Did you guys spend some time in Dallas as well? Yes, we did. Okay, could you kind of share like some information on when you got to Dallas? Ooh, that was the days. Um, Thank you. Snoop. He was just that type of kid and he just was always active. It's kind of like when I look back now in his life, it's like he knew he had a little time to do what he needed to do. He would sometimes go to school, um, or sit in school one morning. He might not come back for two days. He just, you know, it'd be in somebody's house spending the night or whatever he would do, but he just kind of did a lot in Dallas. She was alive. <laughs> she, yeah, uh, he and Laudry went to school together. He saw you. I scared him. Dallas, you know, they went to the elementary school together, which I didn't know. Most three told me about them going to school together there at Stop Eagle. Really? Yeah. And so what, like, did Mo three tell you any stories that, that him and Lucy had? He just kind of said it's who would be at his house all the time, so you like, know, <laughs> you know? And I was just like, oh, okay, so I'm not looking for y'all. Like, just wanted to see, you know, who else he was at, because he would just not go home. And then so when she back up at school, and so I'm not knowing whose house he was at. So all the time we Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, sometimes Mo 3 said he'll be over there when you're. Rest in peace, Mo 3. I made a great documentary about him a few months back. 
Go check it out when you're done here if you ain't familiar with his story. Anyways, what set Snoop apart from other rappers was his exceptional ability to freestyle, a talent that a lot of rappers struggle with or just straight up suck at, but not Lil Snoop. He effortlessly delivered bars for hours on end, showcasing his lyrical proficiency and originality. However, Snoop's real strength lies in his authenticity. He drew inspiration from his personal life experiences and the hardships of his community, composing music that deeply connected with his audience. It was evident that Snoop possessed the potential to achieve an immense amount of success in the rap industry. I just say, struggle. <laughs> <laughs> rap where we come from in the slums, like Louisiana is like the boondocks, you know what I'm saying? You don't know nobody make it out of there, so everybody who make it, you can hear it from them, you know what I'm saying? And we just got our own style of rap. Like I say, I'm from Louisiana, you know what I'm saying? Like everybody spit the struggle, so kind of everybody, you can kind of hear like low key, like the same kind of thing, like kind of, but everybody got different stories. Like up here, it's like a whole different style, so it's like I can, you know what I'm saying, tune in with their style and my style and like bring it to a, just a whole worldwide thing. In 2012, Snoop released his first mixtape, 16 and Running, which garnered significant attention and increased his following. However, his big break came when his favorite rapper at the time, Meek Mill, was scheduled to perform at Grambling State University, which was close to where Snoop was living. Despite his peers' doubts and skepticism, Snoop was determined to give Meek Mill his mixtape, even if it seemed like a long shot. He knew someone that worked security at the event and was able to obtain a pass to attend. Snoop seized the opportunity and approached Meek Mill as he was leaving in his van. He knocked on the window, and when he rolled it down, Snoop handed him his mixtape and quickly made his exit. And this, and this lady, I know she a police for grounding, like, unless it's not a plus security, mm -hmm. yeah. but she like, you were out, I called him, like, what's her name, you base change, so, yeah, I can get you base stay in, you bring that, she give me in the show for you. So she like, me going there, yeah, so she like, you know what I'm saying, just go and just stand right here in the crowd, but stand by the door, so when I come out, and just take him, come on, hunter died. So I'm like, I got, and it's crazy, going my cousin, see, now he like, he gave me two mixtapes, I don't know why, and I told him, I said, man, just give me one. He like, no, nah, I'll take two, just in case. I'm like, man, I didn't need one. He like, no, nah, I'll just take two. So I take two, so we, she come back out, and me come, she come out. She like, it's so bad, I can't even get you back there. So, like, straight up. And like, I'm like, damn, it's crazy and it's So she like, just give me one and give me your mixtape, and I just take it back down the team, I can get it. So I'm like, all oh, right, that's how I deal with my mixtape. <laughs> so, like, show me rock the show over. So I go outside, like, boom. It was crazy, like, I see Lee Van right there, and ain't nobody in. Like, boom, so I'm knowing, like, he's still in there, you know what I'm saying? And so he come out, you know what I'm saying? He get in the van. He ain't get in the van. They finna go. I knock on the door. I knock on the window, you know what I'm saying? They look over. And I hold on me, say, pull up. And we're saying, they're driving it down the window. They grab it. And I walked off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> walked off. Snoop encounters some mockery from his companions, who doubted that Meek Mill would even bother to listen to the mixtape. They even made jokes that Meek Mill probably hurled the mixtape out the window. Nevertheless, Snoop persevered and maintained confidence in his ability and potential. To my own boy, them telling me like, I might not do it without the one look. Like, nobody like, I have a great picture. At first, there was some doubt regarding whether Meek Mill had indeed listened to Snoop's mixtape. However, all uncertainties were eliminated when Meek Mill began showing Snoop appreciation on Twitter by giving him shout outs and even tweeting out some of the lyrics from the mixtape. This served as a significant affirmation for Snoop, bolstering his confidence and motivating him to chase his dream even harder. It's crazy, I ain't even have a phone, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, my homeboy called my other homeboy. You see what I'm saying? When everybody was at the show, so everybody know what I did, like, and I'm thinking like, and he, Playing in the game, cause he talking about he gonna throw it out the world. Then he talking about, and it just shouted you out, man. So I'm like, man, he, damn. So it's like, nah, real. So he's been like, so I'm hearing it in his voice, like this Friday. I'm like, yeah, I ain't let me get you right back. So I go on Twitter, me games about, but just click up, you know, I just saying he said like, before he came to Grand, you gotta hear refresh. I hit down here with fresh. You know, swirling it. My name popped up. Made the biggest side of Kool Aid small. <laughs> I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm looking at that one. And like 10 minutes later, 
tweet around after my song. I'm like, oh, hell, man. <laughs> so I'm like, damn, then my other cousin called me. He like, me, I don't know what's called me, man. Like, man, I don't know what to believe, because I don't know if y'all playing, but I don't know, I know y'all might not be playing this tweet for real. Snoop's friend Lee played a pivotal role in facilitating Snoop's connection with Meek Mill and supporting his talent when others were being doubtful. Snoop said that he noticed that Meek Mill was still tweeting his lyrics and posting them on Instagram two weeks after receiving Snoop's mixtape. This was a monumental moment for Snoop, and he could scarcely believe that Meek Mill was still listening to the tape after all this time had passed. Eventually, Meek Mill extended an invitation for Snoop to meet him, and Snoop was overjoyed. Fueled solely by his passion and aspirations for success, Snoop embarked on a journey spanning over 36 hours from home, riding on a Greyhound bus. Like two weeks later, me Instagram like a line for myself. Like two weeks later, I'm like, damn, this still listening. Like, mm -hmm. like this wild. Three, you know what I'm saying? So, around the Q, you know what I'm saying? Q, he's from Harris, brother, so boom. He like snaking, and come on, girl, and Christmas, and I'm chilling. He made it, boom, I'm coming up that way. All right, come on. I just come, boom, rode the Greyhound, from my, she was coming. Around me, me, one of my first time even just getting in the police, me the one. Go to the my mom's Greyhound, bro. Yeah, bang, I heard like a bump. I'm talking about, I'm gonna be with it. I heard it sick. Yeah. Although he had told his mom that he was going out to meet with Meek Mill to discuss a potential record deal, he was actually just going to hang out. Snoop didn't let the fact that he had misled his mother about the purpose of his trip discourage him from pursuing his dreams. They just try to discourage him the whole time. Like, man, you can't go pulling up on that man like that. You better not. And Snoop did it anyway. So I learned those stories in the back end of that. 36 hours on the bus man. by himself. Right. Denisha was at the funeral when she realized that Meek did not send for Snoop. He showed up there and made it all happen. Hmm. She was under the impression that Snoop was uh, getting a, a record deal or whatever and Meek Mill is sending send for him. That's why he was on the bus. She couldn't put that together. He ran a lot of game. And so because he said it, my mom used to say, Snoop got you wrapped around his finger. I'm just thinking, why well, lie about something like that? He had to have sent for him if he got your mixtape to him and make sense he tweeted about you but i was just like why a bus ticket but whatever okay snoop was able to link up with meek mill in the studio where he got the chance to showcase his skills in person for the first time this was a significant moment for snoop as he had the opportunity to impress meek mill and potentially secure a bag for his family rapping just what i live swear no need to pretend man i've been out here alone my daddy he was gone and what's crazy about that i don't know when he coming home but that don't stop still be in my zone i've been the king of the Give me my mother song. If I can go back, I swear I went with wine. I started taking over, got behind quick. Their friends started switching. Start acting different, but I can't get off my mission. Guess it's just my ambition. One day I want to be able to pay my kids tuition. Know how I'm living. Just got to stay focused and listen. I hold it down whenever I'm around. Swear to God, I do for Denisha and Charlie Brown. I got my Q right here that me. When you see the Snoop and everything I spit, you know it's me. I represent the streets on that man's my hustle, I ain't all with that dancing. Mm. I rap the street life, that heat life. I'm talking about that. I mean, I'm talking about that beat life. You know, I gotta get my cake up. You don't wanna lay up, cause I be on a face like last night's makeup. A hot ass. <laughs> you know that I've been done it. Better ask about my name. You know, let Snoop, I run and watch it, cause I put that all in a stomach. I'm the hottest out of 318. Swear to God, I put that say. Louisiana is my town. I hold it down for my state. Everywhere I go, them know that I'm the truth. From the mother streets to the mother. Boom! Off the top right there. Off the top. <laughs> 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 hey, James. You got that fire. That was off the top. I thought that was written that shit with so hot. Too start saying our names. God damn. Little Snoop got that fire. Man, fire. Hot at 17, yo. You might meet. My family broke apart. Mm. That the start. Mm. And even when it's sunny out here, I'll be in the dark. Mm. But still can't with me i'm state of the art with a dream like dr king and a mind like rosa parks after impressing meek mill and his team with his skills snoop started to roll with meek mill from then on waiting for his big break to come one day meek mill hit up snoop and told him that a rapper named retro wanted to battle him with meek mill saying he would put up ten thousand dollars and place the bet on snoop winning snoop didn't waste any time and jumped at the opportunity 
He battled Retro and emerged victorious in front of a room full of rap stars. People like Meek Mill and T.I. were there. What's crazy is that even in this rap battle, Snoop was able to win despite not really taking any shots at his opponent. Instead, he just focused on the realness of his story for the most part. Check it out. Yeah, they know what's up with me. They know I'm finna blow. That's why they Don't always stop. discussing me. A broke bummy, that's something I ain't grow up to be. I grew up to get money and all the kids look up to me. Walking down a dark road, hard to get some f***ing light. In my hood is number wrong, it's hard to get some f***ing right. Only thing guaranteed out my hood is f***ing life. Judge in the DA melt your dream like some f***ing ice. Me, I'm just a sinner, really a beginner hood. Trying to turn to a Grammy Award winner. I'm eating, you see on my plate when it's time for dinner. I really rare what I live. You a my little they brother say it's funny. and he know his song before i go to school he up jamming my song it's crazy because i'm looking at him and he getting grown the pain that we done went through i just be getting stoned was never taught right from wrong was always taught if you want to go get it then go get it even if it's with your chrome if you a hustler and you broke it why you going home even if you gotta get out here and grind all along but me i'm chasing a dream trying to make sure that my family's straight but it seems like i can't get right ever since my granny weight people don't know what i seen when i looked in my granny face but i don't trip because i know she in the better place i grew up in the projects with just one room so i had to sleep on the floor in the front room me and all my cousins on the block trying to thug you a schoolboy. we were selling drugs i grew up in jones bro it was straight wildin i hung out with the older cats so it was straight violence and the I looked up to was hustling or robbing, so I hopped off the porch too and started getting it popping. I started with a half a dollar till I got the whole thing on the freeway to the millions, but I'm in my own lane. Word about a bitch, I'm worried about stacking chains. I probably robbed, but I don't even want that chain. I wake up every morning thinking about the dollar, so if you ain't talking dollars, I ain't trying to holler. My heart cold cause I grew up without my father, but it really made me smarter and made me grind harder. Whoever thought I would make my dreams a reality, my own family thought that they was gonna have to bury me. Took my mama nine months just for her to carry me, so I was brought to this world to live like your majesty, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Things started to fall into place for Snoop after winning the battle against Retro. He was eventually signed to Dream Chasers Records because of it. Snoop and Meek Mill continued to collaborate and create music, showcasing their chemistry and talent on various platforms, including the popular radio show Sway in the Morning. Meek Mill was proud to see Snoop shine and allowed him to showcase his talent without getting in his way. Snoop continued to work hard and gain recognition in the hip-hop community with his highly anticipated mixtape RNIC featuring mainstream artists in the rap game and having a slew of street bangers on it. This is one of my favorite mixtapes of all time right here. It was clear that Snoop had made a significant impact on those around him and his peers respected his craft. Snoop even had the opportunity to meet the rapper who inspired him and was signed to his label and they became like brothers. And maybe it was because of all of this and getting to watch Snoop grow as a person and as an artist that made this next part of the story that much more heartbreaking. On June 20th, 2013, Lil Snoop lost his life at the Maplewood Apartments in Winfield, Louisiana. Snoop had been playing video games with Lil E at a friend's apartment when the incident occurred. According to Lil E's recollection, Snoop and his other friend had made a bet on who would win the game. Snoop was putting the whooping on him and the dude was unable to accept losing the bet and resorted to violence. He retrieved a firearm and shot Snoop while they were playing the video game, tragically ending his life. They were playing the game, I would put some money in. Oh shit, Snoop was smashing him. I get through the field. He ain't like this. Okay. You know, it went past. Crown. Okay. So it wasn't over days game, like, you know, some nah, people and everything. It went over that. The club manager and the club owner are both very sad with the death of little Snoop and they say today's performance and concert is in his honor and they're going to be playing listening to his music. Jordan Hamilton's family owns the club Diamonds in Farmerville, which is a local attraction where rising stars come to perform. Hamilton is setting up for tonight's performance where this room will be filled, but one person won't be taking the stage. When I heard about his decease, it, it just shocked, you know, it put shock that he was scheduled to be a diamond. Although Lil Snoop isn't going to be here to perform on this stage, the club owner says the show will go on and it'll be done in the honor of Lil Snoop. It's a great loss that we lost Lil Snoop. And my hand goes out to all the young people. Chase Thompson is going to be the DJ for tonight. He has known Lil Snoop for several years 
and he says his friend was looking forward to performing tonight, doing what he loved the most, rapping in front of a crowd. Thompson says he is dedicating this concert to his friend. Night is going to be like a remembrance thing. So I'm going to give him a section, play nothing but his songs for probably 30 minutes or half an hour. Just remember. The concert at this club is going to be taking place until 2 a.m. And the club owners are grateful for the love and support they have received from the community. It will be an honor and very grateful for you all to come on out and let's honor a little Snoop going home party. The club owners and managers say because of the event that took place, they are going to have another concert tomorrow from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. for everyone else who wants to show their love and support. Okay, Amanda, in our top story this evening, local up-and-coming rapper Lil Snoop is being laid to rest in his hometown of Jonesboro. Family and friends are still mourning the loss of the 18-year-old Adarian Ross. Many gathered earlier for a funeral at Jonesboro Hodge High School. KNOAH Jillian Corder tells us several people are remembering the young artist as more than just a rapper. He was just a kid with a dream. And he just wanted to get out of here, and that's all, you know, that's all it is to it. Friends of 18-year-old Adarian Ross say he was a small-town kid with big-time dreams. These are pictures from Ross's Facebook fan site. He was signed to Meek Mill's Dream Chaser label earlier this year, and fellow rappers say Ross, known as Lil Snoop, was on his way to stardom. We just come to show support and love, you know what I'm saying, to Lil, when Lil was a fool, he did his thing, you hear me? But many knew Ross before the fame. He was a real laid-back person to be around. Like, he always liked to crack jokes and, you know, just miss with you type of stuff. Like, a pull pranks on you and stuff. The, his whole life. A day full of emotion as people say goodbye to the young artist. I feel like he take a child's like a child's life. He was precious, and, you know, and it's, it hurt that we had to, you know, that we had to bury him today. Like, you took, a, you took away a friend, a son, and an icon to a lot of people. Whether they called him Lil Snoop or just a Darian, many say he was a rising star they'll not soon forget. And an arrest has been made in the shooting death of the Jackson Parish native. The body of the young rapper, Darian Ross, was found in Winfield. That's in Win Parish. It all happened last week. Police believe an argument over a video game turned violent. Winfield police have 36-year-old Tony Holden in custody. His picture is coming up. He's accused in the shooting death of Jonesboro native Darian Ross. He's now facing a first-degree murder charge, armed robbery charges as well. Holden is also accused of illegal possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. The suspect turned himself into police this past Tuesday. Ross died from two bullet wounds to the torso. Now, the story that Lil E told at the beginning of those clips about it being over a video game isn't really widely accepted, especially by Lil Snoop's mom. Here's what she had to say about Lil E's version of events. Did you get a chance to speak to Edric yourself? Yeah, I've talked to him a couple times. He had about seven different stories each time, so you know, his word is definitely not his bond, so you can't believe nothing he say. Besides Tony Holden, the individual that was arrested as a shooter, Lil E, or Edric Stewart, was also apprehended and charged with manslaughter for his part in Lil Snoop's demise. However, on the day of Tony Holden's trial, Mama Snoop voiced her sentiments on social media, expressing her dissatisfaction with the legal system, saying that she thought that the justice system had failed her son. The reason for that is that Tony Holden wasn't being prosecuted for his involvement in Lil Snoop's death, but rather for being a convicted felon in possession of a firearm. This was a trying period for Mama Snoop and Snoop's supporters who were mourning the loss of a young, talented artist and had to watch the guy who possibly did it get prosecuted for a lesser charge. According to ballistic reports, the firearm found in Tony Holden's possession did not match the one that was used to shoot Snoop. In a 2017 interview, Mama Snoop made a direct accusation towards Lil E, suggesting that he was implicated in the plot to harm Snoop and even went as far as to claim that Lil E was the one that pulled the trigger. Right now, it's not, it's not unsolved, it's still open. Number one, Tony Holden did not kill Snoop. It was Edric Stewart. That's the number one fact of all things. I'm not saying Tony Holden is innocent. His bullet just didn't kill Snoop. So, you know, the case is still open. I thank God for that because they did close his case and totally ignore his life, you know. So I'm thankful that his case is now reopened and Edric Stewart will be convicted. 
Edric Stewart was a friend of Snoop's, correct? Yeah, Supposedly. he was a bishop to Snoop. That's what he was, bishop. Okay. Um, juice. That's what he was. Right. And so how did you initially meet um, Edric? Did he just come over the house one day with Snoop? Yeah, he just kind of came you? around. Um, I don't really know the kid. I tried to give him the same respect that Snoop gave him. But he just kind of came around and played a little innocent yes ma'am, you know, a little sneaky conniving type thing. Now that I look back on it, you know, he was real quiet, so I can't really say his what his personality was because he didn't do much talking around me. Okay. You know, but he did portray to be a friend. I, I can't say that. In a revealing 2016 interview with Double XL, Mama Snoop disclosed some disturbing details about the circumstances surrounding Snoop's death. She stressed the importance of being cautious about the company you keep as Lil E's culpability in Snoop's death had been established without any doubt. Mama Snoop further added that Tony Holden had only turned himself in, not for the shooting of Lil Snoop, but because he was out on bail, which led to him receiving a 10-year prison sentence for being a felon in possession of a firearm, like I said. However, she expressed her disappointment that no action had been taken against Lil E, despite the judge having determined that Lil E was the one that fired the bullets. But Lil E wasn't prosecuted and instead, was set free. Mama Snoop shared her perspective on what transpired, explaining that Holden and Snoop's argument wasn't over a game to a large extent, but Lil E instigated and escalated the situation. She also revealed that Lil E was involved in another murder, and after checking, that also looks to be true. Mama Snoop referred to Lil E as a jealous and phony friend in a later interview, perhaps because he was someone Snoop trusted and confided in regarding his dreams, just for him to be there when Snoop got killed. And look, Snoop and Lil E were close friends, so close in fact that the night that Snoop gave Meek Mill his mixtape, dropped it on his lap through the window of his van, one of the first people that he called to tell about it was Lil E. These revelations didn't surface until several years after Lil Snoop's death. Now there's also another unfortunate side of this story that we're gonna talk about, and that is Lil Snoop's dad. Because after not being there for his kid at any point during Lil Snoop's life, Snoop's father chose to chase clout after Lil Snoop died by starting beef with Meek Mill and disrespecting Mama Snoop because apparently he didn't like the headstone that was at Snoop's grave. You ready? You lie. And when they brought Charlie Brown, man, I'm gonna go see my son, Lil Snoop, man. I've been holding this right here, man, since 2013, man. I was joking then, dude. And he had this eight years in the pen, man. I had to hold it in, you heard? Everybody ate off that plate, you know what I'm saying? Everybody, man. Mama Snoop, Meek Mill, all uh, type people in the street, you know what I'm saying? I ain't get a quarter out there, man, you heard? Me? That's 99% of my sauce, man. We finna go back and investigate that matter, and I'm gonna prove that. You hear me? Yeah, I'm approved from the trenches. Yeah, once again, man, we finna go back and investigate that sauce, man. That little us snoop all the way to dream taste. And you gonna see that child Brown drip, every drip. You hear me? I, my drip, I ain't mama snoop. Mama snoop a rat. You hear me? Y'all wonder why y'all ain't heard big snoop. Y'all didn't hear big snoop. You hear me? I'd have been to lay y'all ass up. You hear me? You rap can't with me. You rap can't with my drip. Mama snoop kept ratting, though. I'm gonna get in front of the can to let you know what mama snoop is. We need to see what my nips to us. Look like, man, let me see what my cheating runs look like, man. You hear me? This nigga ain't got no more hairs calling on the seat. If me real see him get put in the garage, was me real right here to see him get put in the garage. And I see him up week with goddamn little Snoop on the goddamn chain in 2020. You hear my son ain't got no more hairs calling on this, man. It's important to remember that Snoop's legacy should be celebrated and his memory should be honored with respect and dignity. Instead of trying to gain attention through negative actions, Snoop's father should have focused on supporting Mama Snoop and preserving his son's legacy in a positive manner instead of acting like a complete buffoon online. I've been doing this on my own um, since 1995. So what he's doing now is he's just trying to get the clout off the fame. And if that's what he needs, then I'm going to let him have that. You know, I know where God is taking me. I'm so thankful that I'm here today. There's so much going on in this world today. And we don't have time to dwell on something of that nature. You know, every time, sorry, I have poor connection. So every time that he gets on live, he mentions in me. So that means there's definitely, um, he's a fan of mine. So you can listen to that mess. I don't have time for it. Across the media, people were speaking on Snoop's grave. Snoop's grave is fine. This is very sensitive for me. This is my dead son that we're talking about. And it's, it's not the rapper that everybody is 
that's what you guys love i get that but that's who he loves as well he loves the rapper he does not love a darren uh snoop's name is a darren lakeith ross jr he's supposed to be a junior from his dad but he refused to sign a birth certificate so he's not a, a junior really so all this stuff that he's doing is going to be daily i'm sure it's not going to stop i really was going to do an interview and all that i'm like look let me say this let me get this off my chest i'm not going to go on back and forth with pookie pookie is on drugs his people are on drugs they just he's not in his right mind he's worried about the attention he keeps going to my son's grave playing like that's a joke all of this just to find out that his dad was trying to pursue a rap career himself who would have guessed in this clip we can see him begging to be put on by meek mill meek i'm gonna say that shit one more time when you came in that goddamn funeral meek mill and you seen that walk through the door and them goddamn handcuffs and money bag them told you you know money bag and bad ruins money bag them say say boy there ain't no more Charlie Brown. when you seen that host had another that goddamn funeral in 2013 and this was locked up said he Charlie Brown. If you was at that fruit of meat, you supposed to say that whole head, cuz. Take your lick, man. Me and you supposed to be rich. Me and you supposed to be that took this little Snoop brand to a whole nother level. I ain't trying to beef where I want to take this little Snoop brand all the way back to Buck China. Let's get this money, baby. Hit me up, big Snoop, baby. Hit my line. I'm ready to get this money. Bro, this dude right here. Anyway, Snoop Music, including his popular track Mellow, continues to resonate with fans, and the posthumously released album RNIC2 serves as a testament to his immense talent and potential. The hip hop community suffered a significant loss with the passing of Lil Snoop, and his family and friends continue to grieve in his absence. However, Snoop's legacy persists through his music. Mama Snoop is also committed to keeping her son's legacy alive and said that she's working on a documentary and has been working on a documentary for a few years now about Snoop that is currently seeking a platform for distribution. Her steadfastness in preserving Snoop's memory and sharing his story with the world is a testimony to the impact that he had on those around him. Anyways, that's it for the video, guys. If you enjoyed the content, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, tap the notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a video. As always, it's been fun rocking with y'all, man. I'm out.